welcome back uh, in the last couple of lectures we were discussing uh, about the Fourier transform in the higher dimension for that purpose we discuss very rapidly what do we mean by integration uh, in the higher dimension and what are the differential uh, operators, the derivatives in the higher dimension and the polynomial in higher dimension. So, that uh, leads us to uh, define uh, the one of the most important class of functions what we have seen in our experience in one dimension is the Schwarz class function. So, let me define what we mean by the Schwarz face. This is all f which are infinitely differentiable and then I look at the polynomial x to the power alpha. Recall that this is if x is equal to x 1 to x n and which uh, all these x i they belong to r uh, and alpha is the multi index alpha 1 to alpha n where alpha i belongs to the non negative integers each of this alpha i then we have defined x alpha 1 is equal to x 1 alpha 1 into x n alpha n. Similarly, d alpha of f we define to be del alpha 1 by del x 1 alpha 1 to d alpha n by del x n alpha n of f and we have denote this as summation over i from 1 to n of alpha i mod of alpha. So, this uh, I hit with d beta of uh, f at x take the modulus supremum over all x and this is finite for all alpha beta multi indexes. For uh, concrete example, obviously any function which belongs to C C infinity of R n, they belong to source place. And second part is that uh, one of our favorite function what we have seen is that the Gaussian in uh, dimension n equal to 1 and here this uh, minus pi x square is going to be replaced by. So, easily one can check that uh, this f is in Schwarz space because it has an exponential decay and uh, so here all these uh, if I am taking the derivative then e to the power minus pi x square this is equal mod x square this is going to be e to the power minus pi x 1 square plus x 2 square up to x n square and then this is equal to e to the power minus pi x i square 
and then this is the product of i from 1 to n. So, therefore, when I am applying the partial derivative to this function, then all the rest of the thing is going to come out and the partial derivative. Suppose, del alpha n by del x n alpha n, which is going to be del alpha n by x n and then the product of this by the chain rule and uh, then each of uh, on each single variable the Gaussian has much more decay, faster decay than the polynomial. We simply uh, just uh, from our knowledge of dimension 1, we can conclude that f the, uh, given by this Gaussian is in the Schwarz space. Okay, so, now once we have in the Schwarz space, then we define let f is in the Schwarz space, define f hat for j is in R n j belongs to R n define the Fourier transform of f at z. So, now we need to consider like for example, the Fourier transform uh, for 2 pi periodic function, we have or 1 periodic function, we have defined f hat of n is equal to integral 0 to 1 f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i n x where n is an integer for f in the Schwarz space of R, we have defined f hat of xi is equal to minus infinity to infinity f of s e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. So, what we had observed that the fundamental behavior of the function e to the power i n x is nothing, but it is a continuous homomorphism from the circle group uh, to the circle group. And for r e to the power 2 pi i j x is a continuous homomorphism from real line r to the circle group t. So, naturally here we would be interested to find the continuous homomorphism phi from r n to t. This exactly as in the case of r, we can show that then in that case phi x is equal to e to the power 2 pi i x inner product of j dot product. So, we will uh, many we will denote this x dot z. So, here so now we are all set to define the Fourier transform in higher dimension this is f of x then e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot z dx this is what is going to be our Fourier transform uh, for the higher dimension. So, easily one can see that if uh, mod of f hat of xi, this is less or equal to integral over r n mod of f of x and then e to the power 2 pi i x dot j modulus is going to be equal to 1. So, therefore, this is d x. So, so, f hat is a bounded as a matter of fact 
in R, what we have seen is that if f is in Schwarz space, then f hat is going to be also in Schwarz space. So, that question we will address it here and of course, uh, uh, this is uh, the proof is going to be more or less same. So, let us first look at the example. Let us take f of x is equal to e to the power minus pi mod x square. Now, let us compute the Fourier transform of uh, this f. So, now f hat of xi this is equal to integral r n e to the power minus pi uh, x 1 square into e to the power minus pi x 2 square e to the power minus pi x n square and then e to the power minus 2 pi i x 1 xi 1 e to the power minus 2 pi i x 2 xi 2 dot 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 and e to the power minus 2 pi i x n xi n that is the dot product and then this is d x 1 d x 2 and d x n. This is uh, the Riemann integration and here this R n integral is this is R R this is n copies of R then this. Now, if we like uh, if we will do the repeated integral by pulling out uh, the other variable and only we perform one integral then this is going to be let us say we will write it down for 1 this is r this is n minus of 1 copies e to the power minus pi x 1 square multiplied by e to the power minus pi x n minus of 1 square and then e to the power minus 2 pi i x 1 xi 1 uh, x n minus 1 xi n minus 1 then the integral e to the power minus 2 pi uh, x n square e to the power minus 2 pi i x n xi n d x n and then this d x 1 to d x n minus of 1. So, this is nothing but what we know that this is e to the power minus j n square. So, the similarly if we perform each integral then this is going to be e to the power minus pi j 1 square e to the power minus pi j 2 square e to the power minus pi j n square which is equal to e to the power minus pi mod j square. So, the Fourier transform of the Gaussian is again a Gaussian. Okay. There are uh, several uh, important uh, uh, properties uh, of Fourier transform what we have observed uh, uh, for R that how the Fourier transform behaves with uh, 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 translation, dilation and in R we do not we have the reflection where that is x going to minus of x and uh, here the reflection will be replaced by a rotation that is means we will come to that first the translation we define uh, that uh, let a y belongs to 
R n then we define tau y of f at x this is equal to f of x minus of y. So, therefore, uh, when we have defined uh, this is so tau y f hat at xi this again just using the r we have f of x minus of y e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot xi of dx. Now, if I make a change of variable here, then this is f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i x plus y, then this is xi dx by making a change of variable x going to x plus y and uh, then this uh, is nothing but R n integral over f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot xi into e to the power minus 2 pi i y dot xi dx. Now, this is independent of x. So, as earlier we get it heated the Fourier transform gets heated with the character e to the power minus 2 pi i y z i x. Then modulation define uh, that means m of y of f uh, of x we will define e to the power 2 pi i y dot x f of x. Then m y f hat at xi this is going to be again r n e to the power 2 pi i y dot x f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i uh, x dot xi uh, d x. Now, this is equal to in R n we know that uh, y dot x is equal to x dot y. Therefore, what we can get is this is f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i and uh, this is x dot minus if I am taking xi minus of y dx. So, this is nothing but f hat of xi minus of y. So, if I well, if we are taking the translation then taking the Fourier transform then we get heated by a uh, character that in fact the modulation of f hat now, if we take the modulation and we take the Fourier transform, then the Fourier transform gets translated. And uh, then the other uh, important thing is that dilation so let delta greater than 0 define. d delta f of x this is equal to 1 over delta to the power n in r, in the case of r we have defined just 1 over delta and then this is x over delta. So, now exactly as in the case of r if we compute the Fourier transform then this is R n 1 over delta to the power n f of x by delta e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot xi of d x. Now, we will make a change of variable let us say y equal to x by delta 
then d y which is equal to d y 1 d y 2 to d y n. So, on each factor I am going to this is essentially x 1 by delta up to x n by delta. So, this is 1 over delta to the power n d x. Just simply now if we put this then what we can get is that this is f hat of x this x becomes x into delta. So, therefore, this is delta of z. This follows exactly the same argument as in the case of r. Then we have uh, something uh, uh, in r n in higher dimension which we do not have in one dimension that is called rotation. So, uh, we can define uh, a rotation r f at x which is equal to f of a x where a is an orthogonal matrix. So, which means a a star is identity. If I have uh, a vector in uh, uh, r n then if I apply a uh, orthogonal matrix then it is going to rotate it to another vector. So, this is now we say uh, then what is going to happen with r f hat at xi. Now, this is going to be r n f of a x and then this is e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot xi d x. Now, if I am going to make a change of variable suppose a x we are writing at y then x we have a star of y because a star is the inverse of a. So, therefore, the x dot xi this becomes a star y dot xi which is nothing but by the matrix operation this you can uh, symbolically can think of this dot product is nothing but the inner product. So, this is xi. So, if you take to the other side then this is going to be a xi and then when I take the then the d x this change this change of variable will say that the Jacobian is going to appear and in this case what we know that the determinant of a this is equal to plus or minus 1. Therefore, modulus of the determinant is going to be 1. So, hence by making a change of variable we get that f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot a j i and then this is d x which is equal to f hat of a j i. So, this calculation easily uh, so that if so now what we will define a function f is said to be ra radial if f of x is equal to f of y if wherever it is uh, mod x equals to mod y. That means, this function is going to be determined if I have this is x any wherever it is uh, lying over here. So, x is lying here or here whatever or here in this matter. So, o f is going to take the value the same value on this sphere which is the mod x the sphere of radius uh, mod x and centered at 0. Now, from this 
previous calculation one can easily see uh, what one can see is that if f is radial then f hat is also radial. So, that means what uh, suppose if I am looking at this uh, any x in this sphere, then I am saying that on this sphere f is taking the constant value and f hat will also take the constant value. That means from any point here suppose if I want to compute f hat at this point, then I can find a rotation a such that x I can transport it to uh, this point on the sphere. So, here that is what our r f now has become. So, this what we know is that it is essentially f hat of a j. So, th therefore, it is going to be the constant all throughout on the sphere of the radius x. So, that is uh, one very important uh, property which uh, uh, um, we would uh, uh, like to exploit in our uh, journey into the higher dimension Fourier transform. Okay. So, now uh, while dealing with R, we saw that the behavior of the Fourier transform under the derivative and the Fourier transform of the function which are heated with uh, the polynomial, they play a very important role uh, in uh, R and here in exactly in the same fashion if we want to check that if f is in swar space and we would expect f had to be in the swar space that means what we need to check is that all the derivative of f hat they have very good decay uh, they decay rapidly and uh, then we can have a control for every fixed multi indices uh, alpha and beta. That is what I mean to say is that what we need to look at d alpha of f hat and then of xi and then this is xi to the power beta some multi index and then we would like to take the supremum over xi. This is what we would like to uh, control and if we can manage to control that then f hat is going to be in the source space. So, in the next lecture this is what we are going to see that we can control this and the proof is just a bookkeeping as that is in R. Nevertheless, we will write down the sketch of uh, the argument that how to conclude if f is in the source space, then f hat is also going to be in the source space. Thank you.